first we have Frederick Hulton, Hulton, and I'm sorry we didn't practice these names before the show, uh, but Frederick is the co-founder of the uh, Open, Open HMD project. So Frederick, welcome to the show. Thank you. And then we also have Dro Joey Frewerda. Frewerda? Am I saying that right, Joey? Frewerda. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Frisian name. Ferrida. No, there's no way my mouth's going to make that shape. Uh, so I'll enough. just call you Joey. How's that? Now, we do have to explain, Joey, you also work on the project, and that's great. But people who are watching this, the show right now are wondering what the heck's going on, right? And I mentioned at the beginning that we had some streaming issues. Uh, Joey, why are you green? <laughs> so I'm actually 3D right now, which is, of course, one of the best ways to view a podcast completely in 3D, even if you're listening. But, um, well, this is a uh, Intel uh, F100 camera, which is a, a real sense type camera, which has multiple sensors. And, of course, in Linux, they made the default one. Uh, the depth sensor. So, um, because we're now change change for the for the streaming issues to another program, it can only open the first sensor. So I'm in 3D. <laughs> so if anybody's wondering, uh, we did have some a little bit of technical issues this morning, and this is the best we could do. So uh, we apologize for that. But it, it's a, it's kind of hilarious, actually. Uh, but at least we can see you move around, and uh, you know we can we can imagine what you might look like, and maybe someone uh, out in the. Uh, uh, the community will get inventive and and 3D model you a a, a body, you know, a physical body or or <laughs> one that looks more like a regular person, and uh, we'll, we'll edit detail. that in afterwards. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but let's 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 talk about the project. So let's go back to Frederick for a moment. Frederick, um, why in the world? Uh, first of all, I don't know if I explained it correctly. Open HMD. Um, it, what is it exactly? What are you guys trying to accomplish? Well, it's a um, completely open source driver. Uh, for um, from the start, we started with the uh, Oculus Rift DK1 because they promised a uh, Linux driver, but they never delivered. Or well, they didn't deliver for several months, and we felt that uh, we should uh, make it happen. Uh, so we started writing our own driver, uh, and it turned out pretty good for the DK1 because it had pretty simple sensors and stuff. Um, so basically it was just to get a Linux driver for the thing pretty much. Then later on, Oculus actually delivered on their promise and, and released a Linux driver for it, but then they dropped it later. So now we're like one of two or three drivers that actually delivers uh, Oculus Rift uh, support to Linux. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I mean, and yeah, go ahead. So some of the other things we wanted to achieve was uh, that we we uh, we write a driver that uh, has a common API that you can implement with different uh, hardware. So like skip the, if you remember back in the days when 3DFX released their uh, um, uh, Glide API that only they supported mm -hmm. and all the other ones like lag behind and, and then gathered around OpenGL and then DirectX later on, I thought maybe we could just skip that whole proprietary crap and, and just skip to a open API that anyone can implement right away. So we designed, designed the, the thing with, with that in mind so that we, we could keep a, a stable ABI so you can basically just write your own driver if say you're developing an hmd you can just like swap out the dll and if a game uses a open hmd you can use it with your own uh, hmd that you're developing and stuff like that make it hacker friendly if you will and does this only run on linux or could i use this on other platforms could i use these drivers on other platforms as well uh, we support uh, Mac OS X uh, or Mac OS 10, I believe it's called, and uh, uh, Linux and uh, Windows. So uh, no, oh, great. we can use it on all the three major platforms. Hey, you're so, forgetting uh, free. You're forgetting free BSD, which is also working. <laughs> you're forgetting R. You're forgetting AM. Uh, 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 you're forgetting Android, which we actually have a framework for as well. Um, and there are some people who run it on ARM processors and stuff like that. So. 
So let me, yes. I want to ask about that because, you know, Guillermo and I do a lot of stuff on embedded systems. I use the Raspberry Pi uh, mm -hmm. for stuff all the time. I mean, that's not going to be powerful enough to uh, to really run anything meaningful, is it, um, using these drivers? Well, well, it depends on, on exactly what it is you want to run. Uh, I mean, the Raspberry Pi, it's 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 capable 3D wise, uh, especially the, the latest version. Um, but sure, you're not going to play Crisis on the thing, but you could play something a bit more abstract in graphics, perhaps. It's it's doable. Yeah, because there this could be really... This, oh, just a second, Joey. This could be really cool if you're... if you're. I'm thinking if I'm building a project and I want to use the technology to illustrate something uh, or to build some sort of interactive demo or something like that, um, this, this would be perfect. It doesn't have to necessarily be high quality, like you say, but if it works... Um, then that's just another way to interface with someone's project or someone's artwork. It sounds really cool to me. Joey, go ahead. So for the um, uh, Raspberry Pi, there's actually a project called VR Zero, which recently uh, released a small framework to uh, that works with OpenHMD to uh, do like low um, uh, uh, low quality uh, graphics content and trying to optimize it so um, uh, people in embedded but also in education uh, or in um, uh, academics can have like uh, smaller. Uh, lightweight um, um, opportunities to work with VR. That's really, really cool. I think it's really exciting. Um, Joey, let's stick with you for a second. Uh, Frederick mentioned before, I think DK or DK1. When I think of DK, I think of Donkey Kong. Uh, I'm <laughs> guessing that's not what this is. So for those that aren't immersed <laughs> in the VR universe as you guys are, what is, what is DK1 and these other symbols? What, what, are, they, what are they actually refer to? So uh, DK stands for Development Kit. Uh, when Oculus first started out, they did this big Kickstarter and they said, well, we're going to work on a consumer version, but before that we need a couple of developer kits. So they started this naming scheme where they released DK1, which is Development Kit 1, uh, DK2, which is Development Kit 2, and eventually uh, we now have the consumer version, which is called CV1, which is short for uh, consumer version one. Um, and that kind of sticked around as the version number for the Oculus devices. 